welcome to the first of the inaugural panel discussion here at the gallery, The Shape of Time. I'll allow the esteemed panelists who have joined us from all over the world to introduce themselves. Without further ado, Infants, fetuses 
have, there's only a pool of like 50 phonemes, I guess, for all languages. And um, infants have start to have a specific muscular response to each phoneme. And everybody's is different, and it will stay that way for the rest of their lives. And so I, and I'm sure that must be an underlying muscular response, underlying whatever anxiety is about to begin, whatever, you know, so. Um, right. Well, I want to get back to that, definitely. Because I love that subject so much. But let's just quickly also go to Sadie. Yeah, sorry. Time. Um, hi, I'm Sadie Benning, and um, I love the story, so I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be here for yeah. now and everyone else. Um, I guess I, I mean I'm an artist and I, I don't teach my, I don't have my own school yet. Or <laughs> 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 Uh, but I do really believe in teaching yourself, even if you are, you know, claim that you're in the school or that you are a teacher, to always be kind of teaching yourself. So I like the idea of taking that into your own powers and doing that outside of institutional structures. Um, I guess just really just to say a little brief thing, because I don't really know how to introduce myself specifically as an artist, like in a sentence or something. Um, but just to like kind of tap into this conversation about time, should I do that? Yes. Oh, okay. yeah. All right. Yeah. That, that's I guess why we're all here, um, <laughs> spending time together. Uh, but I I think like uh, I was trying to understand like where uh, or how how I think about time in my work I guess, and some of it has to do with always just feeling a little bit outside of time, or, like I don't really belong in the normative time structure that exists. You know mm -hmm. that is kind of chronological or that has to do with a certain kind of biology that is around like binary gender structures or or just norm just things that like make you adult kind of. Yeah. And I just have never really understood that exactly. <laughs> like how to fit into that in a way that makes sense for me. So I feel like I've I've often gravitated towards trying to understand the time through what I'm trying to turn you up, but I think it was what, do I need to be turned up? Was I not loud enough? People here. Should I shout? Okay, okay. All right. Then it's my turn. That's okay. Half the pathological normalcy. Okay. Oh yeah. Pathological normalcy. Normalcy. Yes. Society is psychotic like that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I'm. Yes. Okay. It is true. Let's face it. Time has been very, very distorted, and now really it's terribly distorted time. And I, I feel like I gravitate towards a lot of different mediums because you can kind of work through or understand time in the process of, you know, making a video is very different in terms of how you deal with linearity or non-linearity right. and editing and the kind of durational quality of projection and possibly all sitting together to watch something from beginning to end versus something being installed or on a loop or, you know, where beginning or end is is like questionable. These kinds of things like start to uh, like you can explore them in different mediums differently. So painting has right. like a really different quality of how you think about time. Yeah, and, and I don't want to be restricted to any one. Am I? Yeah. I mean, I think I, I think about it in more of like a tap color. <laughs> don't get me involved in that. <laughs> Uh, I feel like when it comes to drawing, or because I feel like painting, I don't really feel like I'm a painter, but I make things that could be on the wall that looked at as a painting, maybe. But I feel like often it's more constructed through like a sculptural form or a drawing. Yeah. And that I, I mean, in that way, like when I draw, I, I never re even remember. Like I'll look at a notebook and I don't even remember drawing it. Like it's kind of coming from somewhere that. I mean, it, it, I don't know what time frame that is, it's right. somewhere else. Right. It's like kind of a medium-like feel, like where you hook into thinking and you're kind of there and not there. And, uh, yeah, well, so. Well, I mean, I think that the, 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 the kind of hinge, this, this sort of, just briefly, the little talk I had with you, is this idea of time being a kind of experiential thing. Uh, and uh, that you have to author in some way, and then time being memory, in your sense, it's very hard to think about both at the same time. But modernism, maybe, we can address that in both ours. Well, I wasn't going to talk about modernism. Oh, okay. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that, that's why I was um, My name is Michelle Haidu, so I'm an art historian. I don't have anything personal to reveal at all. Um, 
wouldn't say. <laughs> <laughs> interested in um, time and relationship to history. And that was something I thought that maybe we could eventually talk about if we get there with respect to John's work. Because one of the things I was thinking about is the way that um, you know history gets played as a kind of a destructive force for subjects. Of course, you know, we all get damaged by it. But then time is supposed to have this reparative element. And I am interested in the way that Don's sort of setup of time maybe stays ambivalently between the reparative and something else, not, not so clear. Um, so in other words, it's not going to come in and this installation isn't going to make it feel good. The objects don't immediately, well, it might make you feel good. I like this particular part. It makes me feel great. But um, the objects don't give that much. No. To you, and that part they're, 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 the, they're remaining in the object status. Right, the object status with their little white squares around them. And um, so I like the attempt to draw us into an expectation that they might do something without necessarily keeping us waiting, because as soon as you have the element of performance, you realize. The waiting isn't going to deliver, you know, that the, the, the performance is going to deliver the answer, or it delivers some part of the answer. And this is something we were talking about moments ago, whether Don's bio delivers the answer. Don, would you like to say What was the question? What was the question? Does your bio deliver? You mean the bio that's on this piece of paper thing? No, the one that you deliver when people are in the space. Oh. Um, that bio? Um, well, my name's Don Casper, and uh, thanks everybody for coming tonight, and everybody on the panel. Thanks, guys. Thank you for Yeah. Um, so, yeah. that's funny that you think you don't know why you're here. That's hilarious. Long past that. Okay. That's <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I guess where I was going with this panel, and then, um, which differs from my bio, I guess, when you come into the space, um, this is the most amount of people that I've had in this installation. So um, it's sort of a more uh, interactive in the sense where the viewer is to come in and um, have a conversation. So, but it sort of depends on the person. It's sort of like a choose your own adventure novel. Um, so in a way, the first couple of minutes, of my interactions, or even like three seconds, like these minutes, I mean, we had this conversation earlier. Initially, I was thinking everyone could talk about themselves for five minutes, but then they poo pooed it because that was kind of like the space of time in five minutes is much longer sitting up here and yeah. in the you don't want to be so, yeah. Googling. Yeah, so that in a sense is, is um, kind of my understanding with how this installation is to manifest in a sense. And it, in a way, it addresses that because it does oscillate and, and, and move, maneuver itself between many different mm -hmm. sort of generations of time and some intimate. So that's why I invited everyone here today because I'm interested in how uh, everyone on this panel is addressing their own practice and in, in, in how they address their own sensibility of time. And, um, and I am not so interested in the sense of like a Gregorian calendar or this sort of like tick, 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 kind of deadline, kind of time. I mean, the anxiety behind that is pretty prevalent. I mean, I think we, we've all experienced it in some way. And I'm trying to sort of dismantle that. Because um, I, if you haven't figured out, because I'm already hopped up on an to me, but like, I run pretty anxious. And um, oh, I'm trying to kind of let's say slow say, it down, and in a way, you have charisma. Well, there you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very much a part of it and 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 for me to when I'm here and when and I sort of did it where I, I kind of allow myself this space to be here when I choose to be here with this installation that's the first time I've done that and it's it was, it's been difficult because I get very anxious about not being here and what happens to the installation when I'm not here. So um I've let a lot of that I mean everybody that works here gets a sense of that, right? Liz, I see you laughing. But, yeah, it's, it's true. They are our, our objects that you 
which David Lewis has sold, had you not? Have you not sold that hero? I'm sorry? Have you not sold that hero? I... There are no objects, but that's the thing that we want to be done. Right? Well, yes, that's the other thing that I'm interested in, is what happens when these objects as you so as you so eloquently. Well, it's very sad because those are full of photographs from Don's grandmother. Don't blow it for people that haven't seen it yet. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. But it is really a sacrifice. Upon, upon the, 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 the spectator's <laughs> interaction with me, one may choose to learn the contents of the dresser and the suitcase, mm -hmm. of which I was for many years not allowed to look in. So then we discover and rediscover and rediscover. With each new person, I see new things. And, and I also work with an actor, Julia Bray, and she interacts with the dresser. And I've given very simple sort of instructions in which she is both me, and she's, my, she's me, my mother, and my grandmother. But she knows none of these people, so that's left up to interpretation as though to be decoded by exploring the contents of the dresser. Mm -hmm. But um, she's the which only one. Which is very ominous and creepy, I might add. Mm -hmm. Is it not? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or the dresser. That's probably the oldest thing in this through? room is that dresser. And Did you go through it? What? The dresser? No. Like, no not yet. I just love that that's... That, that that's that. that. No, that that's how you're thinking about it. Ominous? Oh, <laughs> no, it's interesting. Well, the, the, yeah, because, I, I mean, I think that there is a kind of, kind of uh, this thing of time and the art object itself and the status like the status of the art object is kind of not doing as good a job as you yourself. Well, Sometimes. Well, that's an organizational issue, I think. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> which, I, <laughs> which I think, but like to their own devices, objects don't don't maintain that on their own. Right. Without the story or without there we have the time story. and memory and the art object always. Oh, <laughs> the problem with the art object being representative of time that it is. Oh. Yeah. And that it has a special magic status. It's a time in history. It's not a problem for me. In history. In history? In, history? in, art, history. in art history, is time. Say it again. Because, like, uh, uh, one with big problem with an art object is it sort of has a magic time to it. Oh, that it stands yeah. outside of time. Uh, outside it stands outside of time. Yes. But then, I mean, Dawn's object seems to operate differently because it's obviously a lawnmower with a history, a dresser with a history, so that these, That's to me, saying. don't feel like those kinds of objects, even though I think David is going to sell them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I like the direction. Um, I don't know if it well, does. They, they're good objects. That's the other thing. But they're not really. I mean, they're no. They are. <laughs> okay. Okay. So when you say good, uh -huh. tell us what you mean by good, because maybe well, we I think they're good because they're a loss. They're a loss. A personal loss. Uh -huh. yeah. For 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 <coughs> Don to give them up. Up. To give them up. It's a personal loss. It's like you in a hurricane and you lose your photographs. So that's what makes them yeah. good objects. I think. Like a gift. Like a gift. There's also but how does sound work in that out. scenario then? What, how, how can sound be a perfect object? Well, or an imperfect object? I'm here. Sound is probably the basis of everything. I think so what's I, the sound like is the vibration is kind of like the basis but of everything. You want to tell us what well, well, that's, I mean, I think, what? Someone say something? Someone oh, yell yeah. out loud? Oh, louder? I said vibration is supposedly oh, the, the, the basis of it. Many like lots of cosmologies and uh, and physics and stuff so of uh, consciousness and uh, and sound vibration and resonance are the are the, the like sort of ground of everything, which is why two objects that that resonate and sync with one another um, can have one at the end of the universe and one here if they're at if they are in 
sync with one another in this certain way, their molecular bonds will dis dissolve. And that's how Singer breaks the glass because uh, she, <coughs> it resonates and the glass starts to vibrate more than its molecular bonds can handle and it dissolves and becomes another object. But that's not helpful in this guy. I'm interested in that. And how does one manifest <coughs> that time of, um... Don, can you speak into the, uh... Yeah, sure. Yeah. I can't repeat what I just said, though. What is it? I said yeah. everyone on that panel, maybe everyone can just lean in a little bit. To my lean in. Lean in. Lean in. <laughs> lean in. 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 But time is different if you're in the flow. Yes, and flow. if you're being this life, like in the 70s when I was growing up, it was like, we were going to have jetpacks and people wouldn't have to work anymore so they would be able to realize their life dreams. Not to take it over. And um, because there weren't like that many options, uh, supposedly, that were available. So now it's this distraction. It's like, it's like if I want to go on to something and make a picture, or, or post a picture or go discover something, I have to, I cannot get a state of flow because I'm constantly having to agree to the legal agreements that for some reason those guys in their docker <laughs> change the word. And I feel like it's, I feel like, you know, like it's on purpose. Yeah. Dockers? Dockers? Well, I think that these, look, what are you talking about? Them like Google or doing their change in their pockets while they're trying to figure out ways to fuck with our heads with a legal agreement. <laughs> so it's like iTunes, so we can't enjoy oh, yeah. it. Like there's just this constant ominous feeling that authority's watching you and you could make a mistake. Yeah. And then it just can't get those things off of my screen. You just relax. Well, we can't even address that question of the computer because it's just too Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, I just had the flow. It's I'm sorry, bad. but uh, it's too fast. Yeah. Well, I've also talked for 40 you know, I can. Like there's like a juxtaposition between like you're talking about loss 
or a feeling of like what these objects, how they manifest or what they mean to you, kind of, but then also how they're about other things that are not so depressing either. Like they're the kind of combination of, right. of things happening. And that also is where in your work kind of extended time because you're sort of doing the studio thing like you did in the Whitney. An extended time? Yeah, it was in that piece I wrote it down. Um, it's called the 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 oh that was yeah. really long thing that you put your yes. book there. Yes. Okay, the trans trans state of performance on the exposure of process a nomadic studio practice experiment. Yeah, you're, that, you're you're moving your studio all the time in life, but it's a piece, right? Yes, I, I, that was it that was a piece. Yeah, it was. Yes, that um, I tend to work serially, so that was a body of work. Yeah, um, but this is this is separate from that. Um, this is called this. I mean, it's yeah. This piece that we're in right now, yes, is a separate installation from the Nomad Studio. Practice. But I thought that was just going ongoing. Is it ongoing? It was for that environment. Oh, it's not going on. <laughs> you mean like it's, it's happening right now? Yes, it's happening. Yeah. Uh, 
in her own body, she's very much aware of her, and I'm out of shape. So it was interesting, that anti-matter and matter, and then that when we collide, those things, I think it became exploded. Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, but then sound was the catalyst for that. So, right. well, how was sound catalyst for that? Um, because it got louder oh, okay. over time. But I mean, in terms of performance, I was asking you the other day about your art education and who you were influenced by, and you're influenced by artists that are performance artists that are really working in a gallery context, I would say, which is 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 complicated. Definitely, I'm definitely a byproduct of it. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Institution, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my influences were definitely established, and um, and they were like at least when I yeah, yeah when I met them. I mean, I'm not quite sure what you're like, but I think I understand. But I mean, you trying to negotiate how to make an art object via performance. Yeah, I mean, um, there's a lot that once in this environment. I uh, think the gallery or museum yes. context is very yeah. time is very different. That's um, in the museum context, it's very different from the gallery context, yeah. as well as managing the performance. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I mean that's kind of what I was. Oh man, that's kind of what I was interested in recognizing in this circumstances how that plays out. I'm not quite sure that difference. Like, I feel like I'm still learning that. It's a bit of a muscle memory. Yes. So it's kind of like um, conditioning of sorts. And I. I um, in a sense, I'm at odds with myself in terms of, as an artist, like being self-aware performatively of that time, like of that signature, and I can't, I, because of my education, I think, um, and because of the conditioning, it's like this, I have to unlearn it, or unlearn this sort of, um, it's almost like I know too much and I have these expectations, but with each passing day, it's like, that's, I mean, I, I, I believe that it's, well, the gallery yeah. paradigm is shifting. Uh, you do too, and that's, I'm very interested in how you're shifting it and part of that shift. It is a shift. The status so, of a, uh, it's just the status of what, what, it, what the art object is. It's com so complicated vis-a-vis -vis all these questions. Back me up on that. <laughs> <laughs> And the status of the art object is yeah. Just, well, like, yeah. She's rather she's spaced out. She's spaced out. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Ask it again. She's spaced out. Yeah. What were you asking her? Because I'm really interested in that because I think she is addressing it too. And yeah. I think you're addressing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. What? By spacing out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait, what's the question? Do you need to be raised? I mean, I guess it's hard for me. Because in some ways, like my relationship to making objects has actually, like, I, I went from making videos that were distributed on VHS, like, you know, <laughs> um, and shown in theaters and bought by, like, you know, art libraries and museums and stuff. So I had, like, a, you know, this kind of different, it wasn't, they weren't, they were objects, but, like, in a weird way, they were math, they were, like, you know, cop they were copies. There was no ori real original, and there was no like addition. They were just like there was an unlimited supply, <laughs> um, and these, you know. So I and there, but so I had like as I started to make things that are one of a kind, it's like a really different relationship because it's a different right. market. It's a different kind of well, understanding. People didn't know that about your work. They were kind of shocked, as I remember, because portrait was the first. In New York, to show your painting, or, or I don't know what, whatever they are. But those things are the objects. I don't know, I guess I don't really understand, understand why that's a straight, like, I don't, you know, I understand people maybe being confused, like, because you change mediums or something, but I don't really see why that would be so weird. Like, we make all kinds of things. I'm sensitive to the weirdness. 
<laughs> like meaning in what way? Well, just how 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 deeply it changes the status of the murder object. That's really really violent, you know. Can you explain that further? What do you mean by that? Do you want me to talk about prototypes a little bit? Well, how about if you talk a little bit about moving between mediums? I'm interested. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll go. <laughs> I thought we could talk about the words that are behind us just for like a second. Yeah. Because so these are kind of explain. Oh, yeah, certainly. So this behind us is a is a, a is a fragment of a letter um, from Solowit to Ava Hess. And um, Essentially, he's uh, suggesting that she stop doing all these things in order to get out of her own way and, and produce, to keep, to keep making, to keep maneuvering in the studio. And um, yeah, so it. Uh, so he told her to stop doing all those things. No, to do. For to do those things. Mm -hmm. to, to stop. stop to stop in order to do. That's. Yeah, right. To stop in order to make art. Yes. Right? Yes. But then doesn't it become? It is one but of the. He's also assuming that she's doing all. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, this is one of the great things about pieces how the words take on a different valence because on the one hand, so maybe the way was giving That's free advice right. to Ava Hess. Lovely. Well, he was very supportive. <laughs> very supportive. Very supportive. <laughs> 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 the viewer, right? I mean, they're funny, but they're also like a little aggressive, and then they, they and, the, and there's a narrative component, because I don't know how many of you can see, but at the end it goes like grinding, grinding, grinding away at yourself, which is a nice way to end the grid. Um, but, so, I mean, when you, when you move the... Sorry, laughing yeah. alleyway sneaking, no. Alleyway sneaking, yeah. Alleyway sneaking. I like the idea We've all been there. She's sneaking around in the alley, and stop. So yeah, so I think that uh, you know that okay, so that adoption of his advice into your object and then the ways in which it might or might not play with the space. Could you talk a little bit about how this works with the rest of the installation and the performance? Try. Um so this was what um, kind of inspired the uh, visual score that's on the floor. Um, somehow coming across this when I did enabled me to kind of open things up. So basically, um, I was struggling in between shows and feeling really insecure and having a difficult time um, uh, sort of structuring my thought in a way that would allow me to lock onto any kind of given concept and follow through with it and commit to it. Like I, I tend to work on many different projects at once, but um, at that time things were kind of um, in between and I was in a research and development phase and nothing was like really catching me, nothing was like committing, you know, me to this any, this space of thought. And anyway, um, I was emailing with a friend and he was having the same sort of uh, space of thought, like, oh, you know, the show sucked or no one liked it or, you know, any sort of level of insecurity. And then I, I remember this letter, I remember learning about this letter. And so I looked it up and I sent it to him and then I kind of kept studying it and over a few days I kind of kept sitting with it. And um, it was exactly what I needed to hear. It was exactly where I needed to be. And somehow this alleviated that pressure because, that pressure to create, because to hear someone like Ava Hess having that turmoil, I mean, I didn't read her letter to him. Um, but his response, because I, I couldn't find it. Like, it just couldn't, like, it doesn't, it's just like his response to her. And then, like in the first paragraph, it's like, well, what do we think about that? I don't know. I don't know. What do you think, Jeff? What do you think? I don't know. I think that's. Has anyone read her letter? We don't know that letter. Well, I don't think you need to read her letter. You can understand what probably her response.
songs for Zen. Yeah, it's the ear in a sense. The whole thing gives so much information. Yeah. It sort of yeah. dismantles yeah. that. Yeah. The frontal cortex. The area of our culture, kind of like, yeah. This is all like, like you know, part of it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Maybe this is what we need to do. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
is our memory and the way we tell it, the story of it. But he was cut down by that evil guy, who said, <laughs> not evil, but he mean it's sort of violent, violent. But Nietzsche argued that, quote, historical knowledge constantly floods in from inexhaustible wellsprings, the alien, the disjointed, forcibly impose themselves. Memory opens up all its gates, and still it's not wide enough. Nature does her utmost to receive, marshal, and honor these alien visitants, but they are at war with each other, and it seems necessary to make to to meet them all by force for fear of falling victim to the strife between them. In other words, basically, if you start mem memory, if you open it up, it's just a violent, chaotic mess war. And I'm sensing that from you. <laughs> Once you start asking about the meaning or the meaning of life, well, once you start going down that road, to do that. it's important. It is important. It's important. Yeah, I mean, why is it important? But you're trying to find why, why, exile. Why is it important? You're trying to find exiles, exiles, little beings and voices and perceptions, right? Yeah. The, the way our eyes. It's perception. Feel. Yeah. Yeah. The way our eye, like you know, visual. You guys are all artists. You'll know this. Like if the if available light or, or light or something is the Mississippi River from and then what we can see is what we can perceive is an inch in the in the in the middle of it. So it's kind of to me like the and we're yes. getting millions of bytes of data coming into our perceptual zone right now, but we can only one thing we're taught to only perceive certain things we don't even know that we're rejecting things. There are other things happening here right now don't have a language for, and then there are other little beings who are afraid or exiled to speak up and who also don't have a language. So the objects recontextualize, like release. Like interconnectivity, is that what you... Were, were you a student of Laura's? Yeah. Oh, man. For life. Life. Oh, no, just no. a life student. Just a life student. I'm Diane. Oh, yeah. Not yet yeah. Diane. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'm thinking, right. don't you think what? Do you think? Do you think? No, I should stop thinking. Mm -hmm. you want to say but what is the anxiety about, about time? It, I mean, like, what? We're, I feel oh, like yeah. it's one thing that we all know, and but it's. I. You're slowly. Yeah. But also, oh, like, memory that? and perception, it, it's affected by the yeah. fact that our language is limited to express, like, it. At least to me, I feel like yeah. language is limited as to how we can express yeah. person, how we <laughs> perceive and what we remember. So it like has a there's like a tension. Like it, if we could just look <laughs> and <laughs> try to you know, like, transmit in yeah. that way, yeah. Yeah. which is possible, like but that's what. Because they gave me the voice of reason tonight. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. 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 So I guess now, if um, anyone in the audience has any questions, I'm going to open it up for questions. Like what's going on? Anybody? There's got to be a question. Oh, here's a question. How are you doing? Do you have a mic? Do we give you the mic? Yeah, mic. This yeah. is the longer mic. I'll go. 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 I'll other of us have sort of like made the outer like institutional space their studio, but a lot of them it's like a process of assemblage where they're like moving things into it or like changing installations. So I'm wondering like when it comes to performance, in, you know, in both cases you're like building up to something that's like ultimately ephemeral, but I think performance is like more ephemeral because the build up is not like the change is like I don't know. I, I was wondering if you could talk about like how the process of performing over and over again, how that builds up mentally for you and like how, like what kind of, you know, how that Brilliant works. Brilliant question. <laughs> 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 I don't know, I don't know, how, how that process of accretion works temporarily for you and like how, how you think that comes out of the, the repetition <laughs> of, of the performance. Um, the 
repetition of that, of uh, performance based in relationship to like uh, interacting with an object or an installation? Yeah. I mean, and, and your like personal experience of performing over yeah. and over again, throughout the duration of okay. you know, like a show. Well, it's all the same, the strategy is a little bit, it's been done. It's like a monochrome in a sense. Like the, 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 the set is the, the art object. So how do you differentiate it, am I right, in a sense, partially kind of? Yeah. Okay, I think I can, I think I can understand what you're saying to, um, I'll speak to it as best I can. Um, uh, I'm interested in that tension, the performative tension um, that is created within my physical body and the, and the muscle memory that um, it contains and then creating new memories from familiar circumstances. Mm -hmm. So um, that can be so simply as something like, you know, an Allison Rolls piece of maybe salad and eat it. So a lot of influence comes from fluxes or like data. And, um, and within that, I recognize a little bit of sprinkle, sprinkling in a little bit of like anti-art. So, um, had a big reveal. But, um, <laughs> so, whereas these objects are, in a sense, props, I feel like I'm addressing the sort of deep, I don't even want to say deconstructing, because I'm not trying to unpack anything, I mean sort of dismantling and sort of like diffusing this as an art prop because it's in this context. It's a very hard like uh, act to follow because yes, this has been done um, over and over again, and so in a way I have that on my side because it's so familiar in all of us because it's so learned, you know, it's, it's kind of like, okay, now you know that's there, I'm not going to hold your hand with that information. Now my performance self that has all of these weird muscle memories of confusion and discomfort and just hating my body or whatever in the mood I'm in in that occasion, um, I'm going to, you know, interject, like, plug it in there. And it sort of, in a way, it becomes this kind of illusionist sort of sleight of hand. It's like a magician saying, okay, look over here where the trick is happening here. I'm going to have you look over here. And then when you look back here, you're going to see what's actually happening in front of you the whole time. But it doesn't always work. And that's, I think, where, at least with this installation, is successful. Because, at least for me, in that um, activation, um, is that the objects, I have a certain connection to the objects that I can choose to explain to the viewer or not. I can choose to change the story. And um, in a sense, that is a sort of um, protest against this idea of this being an installation that one comes in passively and views. And you know, when I'm not here, you get to have that experience. But when I'm here, you're not allowed to have that experience. Something else is going to happen. Even if it's even if you don't have time and you're gallery hopping, something will have happened. Even even with the, the people that work here. There's some sort of different exchange. Did that answer your question? DNA is I uh, really appreciated your comments. Don, I'm, I apologize, I'm really not familiar with your work or this show, but I'm curious, by way of extension on what you've been saying, I'm curious how the objects are hit in this time, right here, during this panel discussion, which is neither, um, I mean, it's, it's people have overflowed, they're overflowing their installation. My assumption is you're not gonna get up right now and, and do you, you activate the objects? Is that what I understand you do? I'm just curious. Is that your question? Like, yeah. the no, no, no. My question is, how are the objects now in this time of the, this panel discussion? Are they are they fellow travelers? Or they? It's a secret time. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, well, okay. Uh, what's happening to the objects currently while we're in this space? Yeah, during this time. And, 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 um, sorry, not to answer a question with a question, but do you see do you see this as an inactive installation currently? I I have no You're idea. You're asking me. I'm asking you how you see the objects it, now. Oh, okay. Because okay. you identified two points when you're here and when you're not oh, here. I really appreciate your question. But you're question. kind of both here and not here right now because you're at the PEMA. You're the expert witness or something, and you you've invoked your your. So I think. Okay. So I think. <laughs> in a sense, in a sense, I come from a belief that we're all just mirrors. So 
we reflect back at each other. Hey, I have Whoa. an idea. Wait, that's the answer. I, 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 I don't know. 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 very well at all. I just met you, but, but wait, can I just say, yeah, yeah. I was looking, I'm like, Google Dog, what, what, what did you do? And then, is this thing you did where you played dead? I thought, wow, that is a good cool idea. Like, <laughs> obvious idea. It's like the no, uh, basic idea. Yes, perfect. But maybe, maybe it's a little bit like what your objects are doing sometimes, you know? You're playing dead. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Did that answer? Does that really like no, answer to the question? <laughs> like it's just it's like in a sense it's it, or, it, um, or I could just say they're 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 active. Yeah. There's a social life of objects. And how do you reconcile that time, which is much much more expanded, with the kind of artist's struggle to bring value to things? And that maybe could be a question for everyone. You mean a different kind of value than it's been like? Yeah. The life of the object is long, much longer than your life with it. I think it's, 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 it's a kind of dark answer to that question here. But maybe maybe good for that reason. But what what is it? The, I mean, so usually when we think about a commodity object, it actually has a very short lifespan. Right? It disappoints us in having such a short lifespan. Um, and then, as Rebecca was mentioning before, and then there's the art object that comes and has a, a time out of time, right? Outside of commodity time, supposedly, although not so much as we know. Um, so, but you're suggesting that the artist comes and struggles to give uh, value to an object? Yeah, value. Yeah. What happens? So I don't say it. I'm going to give you some yeah. 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 You know, in whatever it could drive you. Yeah, but that's, that, that's talking from your point of view. But talk well, like about her point of view. No, her point of view. Well, that's what she was asking. The value. But the value, you can't say the value is because of the time you put into it. I'm not suggesting that. I'm just suggesting that that's how I experience the my my own relationship to it. Is the time know. that you put into something? I guess. Yeah. I mean, it's. I don't know. What about the intensity of the when the time stops, when you're making it and it's her whole heart and body are engaged, that's a really radical experience that partially gets imprinted on the materials that you that you're using. I, I, I just but I would I would just resist talking it from the eye and the artist's point of view. But you have to be Life of the object, which extends yeah, beyond exactly. just, what is it? just be, it extends beyond the point of the object as the site of exchange, or as a part of exchange, or as an element what of is that. It? 
when it's away from you after? What? what but or, or before also? Before. Are you talking about material like you can avoid with a tree? And you can extend it that far right. if you so chose to. Okay, but that's not your well, I think it has to do with like literally the value of the art object, which is. But that's just the money value. Yeah. What do you mean? I mean, yeah. Social value. Value. Social value. Well, what about that? I know that exists, but what is your question Back about that? Back to me. I just know, I know what you're. I know what that is, but what are you asking about that? I'm and asking how you question? reconcile that because the object has a life before you interact with it and after you interact with it. And we all know about uh, value production through marks, but we don't necessarily know about value preservation. That's something that we have no control over or that hasn't really been theorized. Well, is, that, is that value at that point? I mean, is the social life just instantly translated into something we can just call value? I'm not sure about that. But no, it's static. It's also value. Though. There's yeah. emotional value. There's um, memory, which Rebecca was talking about earlier. There's economic value. I'm not I limiting it. But that is also incredibly indeterminate. I mean, then you're saying, but then everything can be value. And then I'm not arguing, sure. but I am confused about then what you mean by value. Like, how, that then just becomes a kind of a bit like the X factor that just moves around <coughs> emotions and the. There's another guy though with a question behind you, I think. Do you have a question? Me? Yeah. Oh. Um, no, I did. I wasn't even sure. <laughs> 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 oh, I did. I was about to get something. I was about to get something. I'll come back. I'll interrupt. Does anybody have a question? Oh, yes. Um, so, we were thinking a lot about how objects can kind of hold on to a different time period. Um, Sort of, um, like, you know, yeah, if yeah. someone, if you know so and so touched this brick before she died, and that becomes like this really precious thing because it holds for us that moment, and so and so probably touched that brick. Right. And I was thinking with your work about, I was wondering how you think about um, that in terms of kind of like the need we sometimes feel to kind of hold on to the past and the future and exist in like, all the times at once because this moment is so limited. And if you feel like maybe those objects which hold on to specific moments relieve that anxiety or for you they're more anxiety producing in that field? Good question, I think. Yeah. Um, I guess moderators all say good question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really did think that was a good question. <laughs> I'm interested in fragmented thinking and the 
miscellaneous of, of time and memories, and almost purposefully, so that I do get confused and just see the, the intuitive responses that come. I think that that's the pure, that's kind of a, well, pure so heavy handed. It's, it's, a, it's a natural human nature, I think, to, um, as Lori would eloquently put it, dismantle your frontal lobe so that you are inhibited of this sort of self-conscious uh, entanglement with the, you know, your physical, like, oh, I'm hungry, or oh, I, there's, you know, my foot got stepped on, or something like, there's something to be said for the objects and this belief, like your brick, for example, which is very beautiful, like, the brick is the brick because we see it that way, and I mean, in a way, it's, very frustrating. That's a lot of power to give to a human, I think, to have this ability to say, this installation is art because it's in this context, or because someone like David works with me and we have these conversations and this is what happens as the result for me. And, um, and then the questions that I ask, and yeah, it's very intimate, it's, it's also very lonely, and as Sadie put it, great, it's obsessive, and I can't, I can't stop. It, it, I can't sleep, I can't eat, it's, yeah. It's, we can see them. But much. it's risky to see them by being generous. It's not enough, I'm not satisfied to keep going. Well, but That's then it's just ultimately a brick at the end of the day, it's just a brick. But ridiculous, why do we do this? I don't it's know. It's a brick. What's the point, Lori? Why do we do what we do? Oh. 